Welcome, I'm Rabbi Phil Bressler of Beit Am in Corvallis, Oregon. This is the daily summary video for the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch Yomi Daily Halakha Learning Project, covering the passage from Siman 115 CE4 to Siman 116 CE4. You can find links to the Hebrew and English text of this passage and to the calendar of upcoming passages in this video's description. Continuing our discussion of what happens if Erev Pesach falls on a Saturday night, beginning on Saturday morning, that's Shabbat morning, make sure to start Shacharit early. And the reason for that is it'll give you a, one last chance to have one last chametz meal. Remember, you can eat chametz up until that morning. Uh, but what you should do is actually split that meal into two. You do that by making a hafsaka, taking a break uh, in the middle, blessing, and then doing something else, coming back and eating again. That plus your lunch will give you the three daytime meals on Shabbat that are traditional, since your evening meal won't be sudash lishit, as it might otherwise be. It'll be Passover Seder. There's a special haftarah to read on that morning, and also make sure you separate the challah from your challah loaves. Um, that is the, the tradition of taking a bit of uh, a, a bit called the challah out of the challah dough, and that's in memory of the portion that used to go to the priests. If you realize that challah has not been taken on Shabbat, there are no easy fixes, so the Kitsur cautions to be extra careful about that. In the next Siman, number 116, we begin a discussion of koshering utensils for Pesach. That is, taking something, um, either your, your, cook, your plates or your pots or your utensils, and bringing it from a state of of uh, chametzness uh, from during the year and and making it chametz free for Pesach, it's difficult to summarize this part because the specifics are so important. So I'll try to highlight the important principles involved. It's worth noting that this is a good starter text for learning the technical details of koshering generally, uh, because chametz on Pesach is kind of the most high stakes case. In fact, when I learned Hilchot Kashrut with Rabbi Joel Roth. Uh, studying at uh, uh, with the JCS students in Jerusalem. We actually began with the Shulchan Aruch on koshering for Pesach. Now, some relevant principles that may help you make sense of this part uh, include that, that the material your utensil is made of matters. Some things like earthenware or wood are very porous and therefore very absorptive. Uh, they're much harder to kosher, if not uh, impossible to kosher than other smoother materials. Another important line that Rabbi Roth would want me to remind you of is kibbol o kach holto. So as it absorbs, so too it purges. Basically, if your utensil, your pot, or your pan, or your dish absorbs flavor directly through contact with the fire. So for example, your fire, your your frying pan, you have the food in there, and it's it's uh, uh, the principle is it's absorbing flavor while directly in contact with the fire, then you need to purge it through direct contact with fire. That's called libun from, from the word lavan to literally make something white hot. And you do that with uh, something like a blow torch or extremely hot coals, heating your, your pan up so that it uh, releases its flavor. If something absorbs its fla flavor through a liquid medium, say your soup pots, then, similarly, a liquid medium, in this case, immersion in boiling water, will also get the job done and release that flavor. Things that are made from multiple pieces or multiple materials can be really tricky and actually may not be able to be koshered at all because of the, the difficulty of getting in between those connections. Sometimes the best thing to do is really just to get a new set, a different set of dishes to use during Pesach. That's all. For today, as always, our learning is dedicated to Rabbi Shlomo Gansfried, the author of the Kitsur, and the historic Jewish community of Uzhorod, Ukraine. See you tomorrow.